I'm Christine Borlaat. I'm a professor of endocrinology in Birmingham in the United Kingdom, and I have a special interest in the management of thyroid disease in pregnancy. I've been asked to talk to you about the interpretation of thyroid function and how and when to check a thyroid profile in pregnancy. So as this graph illustrates, there are a number of physiological changes to thyroid function in pregnancy that we need to be aware of. HCG is necessary to maintain pregnancy, and this is structurally very similar to TSH, which will stimulate the thyroid gland to produce more thyroid hormones. So there will be an increase in the amount of T4 and T3 that is produced, and as a consequence, there will be a reduction in the amount of pituitary TSH. So as you can see, at 10 weeks when HCG peaks, the amount of TSH is lowest, and often we have a reduction in TSH. As a consequence of HCG, as well as of estrogen, uh, which is necessary to maintain pregnancy, there will be an increase in the amount of proteins that are synthesized. So there will be an increase in TBG, and therefore the amount of total T4 will be high and will remain high during pregnancy. The increase in TBG generally stays for the duration of pregnancy. There is also an increasing demand with the advancing pregnancy for diiodinase 3, which is the main deactivating diiodinase enzyme during pregnancy, as well as increased iodine demands. A further factor influencing pregnancy is the presence of thyroid antibodies. These are present in about 15% of the general population and are even higher, certainly in women with <clears throat> infertility. The presence of TPO antibodies affects thyroid function differently. So as you can see from these graphs, the usual expected decrease in TSH and increase in T4 happens in women who are TPO antibody negative, but not in those who are TPO antibody positive. So current guidance recommends that in order to interpret thyroid function properly during pregnancy, you need pregnancy and trimester specific reference ranges. Ideally, these are determined in women who don't have thyroid disease. If it is not possible to have these ranges, then using, uh, using pregnancy-specific reference ranges determined in populations who don't have thyroid disease can be used. And if that is not possible, then generally the upper limit of normal is considered as 4 million units per litre. This has implications for how and when to treat hypothyroidism. And current guidance from the American Thyroid Association recommends that when uh, TPO antibodies are present, that if TSH is above the upper limit of normal for the reference range, that levothyroxine is given. For TPO antibody negative women, they recommend that this is certainly given when TSH is greater than 10, and this would be similar for a non-pregnant woman as well. However, I think most practitioners will start levothyroxine replacement once TSH is above the upper limit of normal of the reference range. Again, ideally using pregnancy-specific reference ranges in order to determine this. It is really important that thyroid status is optimized before women become pregnant. And therefore the general recommendation is that in women who are treated with levothyroxine before they become pregnant, that serum TSH is below 2.5 milliunits per liter. So ideally this is done by advising women to double the dose of levothyroxine on two days of the week, as soon as they find out that they are pregnant, because as illustrated in the first, or as indicated um, in the first part of this talk, there are increased levothyroxine requirements during pregnancy. It is also always best to have predicted uh, changes and to check thyroid function, certainly on a full weekly basis in the uh, first 20 weeks of pregnancy, because it is during those first 20 weeks that the fetus is most dependent on levothyroxine replacement or on thyroid hormones from the mother. So what to do then in women who are, have positive TPO antibodies, but uh, do not have, a, but have normal thyroid function. So we've had a number of trials in this field, both in the fertility setting, as well as during pregnancy. And they have indicated that giving levothyroxine to women who have positive TPO antibodies, but have normal thyroid function, does not make any difference to pregnancy or fertility outcomes. So therefore, there is no current evidence that if TPO antibodies are present, but thyroid function is within the normal range, that treating with levothyroxine makes any difference. And this may well be because this is a generalized effect of thyroid autoimmunity, of autoimmunity, which is not really driven via thyroid function. 
We also need to discuss what to do with thyroid function interpretation during in women who have hyperthyroidism. So new onset Graves disease during pregnancy is really rare. And most cases of new onset thyroid toxicosis are gestational transient thyroid toxicosis. Again, this is caused by high levels of HCG, which will give rise to thyroid function test changes that look similar to hyperthyroidism. Often, gestational transient thyroid toxicosis is found in women who have high levels of HCG, such as those who have twin pregnancies or who have high premises. And in order to distinguish this from Graves' disease, good tests that we can do is to measure a free T3 and TSH receptor antibodies, because free T3 will be raised in Graves' disease, as will TSH receptor antibodies, but generally this will not be raised in women with transient thyroid toxicosis. So the distinction between these two conditions is really important because Graves' disease requires treatment with antithyroid drugs, whereas gestational transient thyroid toxicosis generally only requires supportive treatment. In women who do have Graves' disease, and often this is present before they become pregnant, again, regular thyroid function testing during pregnancy is required. Uh, certainly in women who are actively treated with antithyroid drugs, two to four weekly thyroid function tests during the duration of their antithyroid drug treatment is required. Often Graves' disease gets better in pregnancy and we can then stop antithyroid drugs in the second trimester or after 20 weeks. Um, but a thyroid function test before the woman becomes pregnant and then certainly when they're actively being treated is important. When to measure TSH receptor antibodies, well, again, in someone who has previously had Graves' disease, it is advisable to check this before pregnancy, and if this is not possible, to certainly do this in the first trimester. If it is raised in the first trimester, or if the woman continues on antithyroid drugs through to the second trimester, then I would recommend that it is repeated at 20 weeks. Because in women who have TSH receptor antibodies that are three times or more the upper limit of normal, we know that increased fetal monitoring may be required in order to detect fetal and neonatal Graves' disease. If TSH receptor antibodies are very high at 20 weeks, a check at 28 weeks can again help us guide to identify those people where the neonate is at risk of neonatal Graves' disease. Thank you.